Grace and peace. Welcome to Rehoboth Temple Church of Christ Facebook live stream. On behalf of our pastor and first lady, Apostle Bradford Berry and Lady Norma Berry and the entire Rehoboth Temple Church family, we thank you for tuning in. We are the church in the heart of the city with the city in our heart. Visit our website at RehobothTempleChurch.org or reach us by phone by calling 614-252-8219. You can listen to Rehoboth Temple Church services via our Hope Line Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. On Saturdays, you may submit prayer requests and join us for prayer at 10 a.m. The Hope Line number is 712 712- 432-3900. The access code is 646-188-POUND. If you would like to sow a seed to our ministry, you can do so via our website, RehobothTempleChurch.org, and via Givelify. You can give in person on Mondays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the church. While giving in person, you can also utilize our Clover Giving by using a debit card or credit card. As always, you can send your gifts via the mail to Rehoboth Temple Church of Christ, 1111 East Long Street, Post Office Box 83326. Columbus, Ohio, 43203. We pray that what you hear and see blesses you. Without further ado, hear ye the word of the Lord.
Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
bless you, God Hallelujah. bless you. Wherever you are, we yes. honor the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ooh, and we're happy to come to you wherever uh, your social media is allowing us to find you. We want you to know that this is the This is the Rehoboth Temple Church in Columbus, Ohio. We're in the city of Columbus, and certainly we have the city in our hearts. I want to give you a special announcement. Um, we want you to join us on this Wednesday, November 23rd, in a special time of prayer and consecration uh, from 6 a.m. until 12 noon. And at 12 noon, please join us on our Hope Line at 712-432-3900. Access code is 646-188 for our prayer as we enter and usher into this holiday season. Once again, Hope Line, 12 noon on Wednesday, 712-432-3900. And please join us in that morning of consecration from 6 a.m. until 12 noon on this Wednesday, we want you to prayerfully usher in this holiday season. And uh, we want to let you know that we'll not be uh, on Facebook Live or on Hope Line on this Wednesday evening. We will resume our regular schedule on Saturday at 10 o'clock a.m. on Hope Line and on Sunday at 12 noon on Facebook and Hope Line. We want you to once again have a blessed and safe Thanksgiving. Remember the three W's. Wash your hands. Wear your face mask in public. And watch your distance. And if possible, gather with only immediate family during this holiday and avoid groups of larger than 10 persons, if at all possible. Those are the guidelines that have been given us by the CDC. And certainly we want you to be blessed. We want you to be safe. We want you to know that God will be with you and grant you the desires of your heart. Uh, we want you also uh, let you know that we are praying and uh, we're praying especially on this week for Elder Clarence Johnson, uh, who lost his wife on this week in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Ingrid uh, was a beautiful, beautiful woman of God, and we want the Johnson family to know, especially Elder Clarence Johnson, that we're praying for him and his family. We're also praying for the Beals family. We're praying for Mother Lorraine Beals, who lost her husband, Bishop Gerald Beals, on last week, uh, and that's in Jersey City, New Jersey. A home going will be on next Sunday afternoon in Jersey for Bishop Gerald Beals. Churches of our Lord Jesus Christ, Bishop of the Metropolitan Diocese. We also are praying for uh, Mother Dolores Black. We're praying for Deacon Eugene Washington and Marshall. We're praying for Sister Dolores Penn and Nisi. We're praying for Sister Jean Monroe, Mother Jean Monroe. We're praying for Mother Shirley Clark and Apostle James I. Clark. We're praying for Lady Bennett Bradley, uh, who lost her brother in Minnesota on last week. And we want you to know that we are praying for you. We're praying for you on today and always. And we want you to know that Jesus is coming into your home with a blessing with your name on it. So whatever you're doing right now, we ask you to bow your heads with us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, we ask you to remember all those names that have been called and a multitude of others, Lord Jesus, that need you right now. Bless the bereaved families, Lord Jesus, that you might comfort them only as you're able to do. Bless us this holiday, Lord Jesus, this season as we usher it in. Give us your peace and your prosperity. Bless, Lord Jesus, those that are sick and on beds of affliction. Send angels to minister to their bedside, Lord Jesus Christ. Send healing and deliverance by the power of your blood and your great name. And now, Lord Jesus, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And every blessing we ask is in the wonderful name of Christ Jesus, our soon coming King. Amen.
and amen again. I want to thank you once again for joining with us on this morning. I want to thank Sister Regina Constantine for uh, being with us live in Philadelphia. Uh, Sister Trina Wilson, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Sister Stacia Davis. Lady B, get a watch party going right now. Let somebody know that we're on the air. Michelle and Andrea Hester in Fishkill, New York. And in the city of Columbus, Reynoldsburg, North Side, East Side, South Side, West Side. Let somebody know that Rehoboth Temple is on the, on the air. We are live and we're coming to you with a word from the Lord. I want to thank God for those listening in Detroit, Atlanta, and we want you to know that you are blessed because we serve a God that can do anything but fail. We want to turn your attention right now to the word of the Lord, and we're going to be looking at the book of Acts, the 20th chapter. And it's the 20th chapter, verse number 32. Acts 20th chapter, verse number 32. And it reads all follows. Now I commit you to God and the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. That's a new international version translation. And once again, now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Uh, Paul gives advice to the elders from the church in Ephesus on how to survive in challenging times. He knows this is the last time he will see these elders face to face, and his advice is based on his personal experience in ministry and his commitment to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul expresses his loyalty as a servant to God's people. His focus is on the fact that service to God means service to people. Service to God, people, does not translate into being served, but service to God's people translates into a commitment to serve. A literal translation of Acts 20 of chapter verse 32 would be as follows. And now, brethren, I commend you to God, or now I am giving you to God, or leaving you in the care of God, and the word of his grace, and the message of his love, a message which is able to build you up, build up your character, make you strong, give you strength, and give you an inheritance, give you your proper possession, which is your salvation, among all those who are sanctified. It will give you the blessings among the saints and among all God's consecrated people, all those who are consecrated and called by God. The primary point that Paul is making is uh, he wants us to understand his commitment to doing God's will and completing the assignment which the Lord has placed on his life. He was committed to God's people, which proved his commitment to God. It is a contradiction in ministry on any level when we are committed to people and not committed to God. And it is a contradiction to say that we are committed to the work of God and not have a sincere commitment to the people that we are called to serve. Commitment may have different meanings at different times, but a working definition of commitment for this text is unwavering service to the work of the Lord. It is being unshakable, steadfast, with respect to God's will in your life. Once again, commitment, unwavering service. 
being unshakable, steadfast, unmovable to the work that the Lord has called you to do. Paul wrote in the book of Romans, I am persuaded that nothing shall separate us from the love of God. You cannot love God and not love the people we are called to serve. Amen. Love is translated and revealed in our service to God's people. It is total commitment to whatever work you are called to do. It is a total commitment in whatever area you are called to serve. Talents and gifts may be different, but commitment, regardless of the talent or gift, should always be unquestionable. Often commitment begins with a desire to share and be a witness of God's word. It is difficult to share what you don't know. Sharing God's word means becoming familiar with God's word through study and preparation. Commitment is pursuing excellence in every area of ministry in which God has called you to serve. Commitment also involves a desire to become Christ-like or becoming conformed to the image of Christ. One spiritual goal for every believer should be the renewing of the mind. Amen. Commitment comes with a radical change in how we think. It's a change in how we think about ourselves. And more importantly, it is a change in how you think about God. It's not conforming or having a desire to fit in, but it's being transformed by the reprogramming of your mind. It is a total reset on how we think about God and how we think about his call on our lives. Our testimony should be, follow me as I follow Christ. We should strive to say, it is no longer I, but it's the Christ that lives in me. My motivation for service to God is because I'm sold out for Jesus. Remember, service to God is measured by your service to people. Our commitment should be to finish our assignment and not allow circumstances to dissuade us. In the end, Paul's testimony was, I fought a good fight, kept the faith, and finished my course. As the late Congressman John Lewis taught, we must always be involved in good trouble and must strive to fight a good fight of faith against the forces of darkness in this present world. Commitment also means honesty and integrity in how I serve God's people. It is understanding that the gospel of Jesus Christ has power in and of itself. The gospel does the redeeming work of salvation. The gospel does the work of healing. The gospel does the work of deliverance. Not you and not I. Our responsibility is to rightly divide the truth of God's word. We should add nothing to it and take nothing away from it. Paul said his conscience was clear. He proclaimed the whole will of God. Paul declared, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to all that believe. We dilute the strength of God's word when we add dogma and tradition. The gospel is able to stand on its own merit in every generation. It will always be relevant and have power to save, to heal, and to deliver. Our personal interpretation of scripture must be in line with the truth of God's word, which is divine revelation. His word is true for every generation. The four planks of commitment, number one, commitment to God and the people we are called to serve, Number two, commitment to the word of God, emphasizing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Number three, commitment to sharing God's word and rightly dividing the truth. And number four, commitment to finishing your assignment, the work that you are called to do. There must be commitment to God and the people we are called to serve. You can't love God and not love your brother or sister in Christ. There must be commitment to the word of God. We must emphasize the gospel of Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son 
that whosoever believes on him would not perish, but have everlasting life. There must be commitment to sharing God's word and rightly dividing the truth. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word is settled in heaven. There must be commitment to finishing your assignment, the work that you are called to do through faith in Jesus Christ. He is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless. No man can pluck you out of God's hand. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which we're able to ask or think. There must be total commitment to serve the God of our salvation. The problem is that there is a commitment crisis. One observation is that we have what may be called a commitment crisis. Some question the sincerity of those who propagate the gospel and the work of the Lord. The question is, how much are we willing to do and how far are we willing to go? Or how much are we willing to leave our comfort zone for the work of the Lord? Another way to ask the same question, are we willing to serve in areas that we can easily avoid for the sake of the ministry? Jesus becomes our example. As the Father sent him into the world, we are sent into the world. He laid down his life for us, and we must be willing to lay down our lives for our friends. John 15, chapter, verses 12 through 13. Total commitment is radical departure from how we think about ministry. The good shepherd is so totally committed to his sheep that he's willing to die for them. Commitment means that you must die a little each day from ourselves and from our selfish habits for the cause of Christ. If Jesus is our example, what he did for us is what we must be willing to do for others. We must die to ourselves for those that we serve. I believe the answer to the commitment crisis is finding examples of individuals who are sold out for Jesus. The world sees us as rainy day saints, believers who only serve for the fishes and the loaves. The problem is that a low level of commitment always results in a low level of service. We must be examples because commitment breeds commitment. Remember, keep it 100. What you see is what you get. Joshua had good success because he had a good mentor in Moses. The Lord promised Joshua, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. The Lord promised Joshua good success. Total commitment does not mean that we are perfect. It means that we are sincere about our calling and our service. Moses was not perfect. He did not get into the promised land, but he was a great mentor to Joshua. It means we must accept the challenge of cultivating a new Joshua generation of committed believers. When I'm all in for Jesus, my success is guaranteed. 99 and a half won't do. You must be sold out and all in for Jesus. David was chosen in his youth to be king of Israel. One of his first challenges was with Goliath, the great Philistine giant, who intimidated the army of Israel. David asked the question, is there not a cause? He questioned the commitment of the army of Israel because they were afraid to fight Goliath. In his youth, David understood that commitment means being dedicated to a cause. Commitment is your reason for being. It's understanding your purpose and the call that God has on your life. David also understood that commitment means using what you have been given to advance the kingdom. David used what he had in his possession. It was five smooth stones to defeat the giant. Commitment is not using someone else's prayer. It's not using someone else's testimony to have good success. It's not using somebody else's armor, somebody else's anointing to get the job done. Commitment is depending on the grace that God has given you to complete your assignment. Paul commends the Ephesian elders to the word of God's grace. He was alluding to the fact that by grace, 
which is the undeserved favor of God, we are saved. We are saved by grace because God loved us so. Grace is the heart of God's word. By grace, through faith, you can defeat every giant in your life. We have come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. And the songwriter reminds us, trust grace that brought us safe this far, and grace will lead us home. Paul warned the elders that perilous times would come. There will be problems from without and problems from within. They would have to depend on God's word for protection and strength. I want you to know that there is power in his word. Power to make you strong. Power to build you up. Power to guarantee your inheritance among those who are called in the family of God. In other words, what God has for you is for you. There's a mansion in the sky with your name on the title deed. I have not seen, ears have not heard what God has prepared for those that love him. Your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your name has been signed with the bloody pen of Calvary. The windows of heaven are open. The fire is falling tonight. I've got joy deep down in my soul because Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old filthy garment. He gave me a robe. It's pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. That's why I'm excited tonight. The commitment of Jesus is so great that he will not allow anyone to give you your reward. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all had great commitment, but Jesus is the one that died for our sins. Moses performed more miracles than anyone in Old Testament scripture, but Jesus was the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. David is the greatest king ever to serve Israel, but it was Jesus that shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. His commitment was so great that he went to the grave for three days and three nights, rose again and said, all power is in my hands. Because he lives, you can live again. Because he lives, we have an inheritance among those that are sanctified. Because he lives, we have everlasting life. The commitment of Jesus is so great that he won't allow anyone else to give you your reward. He said, behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give every man according to his work. Because Jesus has total commitment, we can have total praise. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Total praise comes when you have total commitment. The psalmist said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Uh, uh, total praise is when I open my heart. Total praise is when I lift my hands in the sanctuary. Total praise is when I open my mouth and say, bless the Lord with me and let us magnify his name together. Total praise is when the Lord has brought me from a mighty long way. Total praise is when I look back over my life and I think things over and I know that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, total praise, total commitment is when I say, thank God you've been so good. Thank God you blessed me and helped me when I could not help myself. Bless God because you are my total praise. If you are totally committed, you can say when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, I praise God for saving me. If you're totally committed, you can give God total praise right now. I owe him my all. I cannot let him down because he's the one that makes something beautiful in my life. If you're totally commitment, say yes, Lord. If you're totally commitment, say I love the Lord and I won't take it back. Total commitment means I've searched all over and I couldn't find no one 
nobody like Jesus. He's the best thing that ever happened in my life. If anybody ever asked my life story for whatever reason they might be, tell somebody that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Total commitment. means I've come to a place that I have a praise and I won't take it back. Total commitment means that I've come to a point where I'm sold out. I'm all in and I know that the Lord is on my side. Total commitment means uh, that the Lord has been so good to me uh, that I can't turn around. Uh, total commitment means uh, that the Lord is my strength and my help, uh, and I'm going to bless his name forever and forever. Total commitment gives me total praise, and I'll praise him because he is the God of my salvation. I'll praise him because he's the best thing that ever happened in my life. God bless you. And remember, Wednesday, 12 noon, special prayer. Wednesday morning from 6 a.m. to 12 noon, special time of consecration. And remember, the Lord loves you, and so do we. Shalom, shalom. Until we meet again, God bless you.